good evening ladies and gentlemen and uh, my name is Yuri Beserap and I would like to share my experience of using uh, auto didactics which was developed by Valery Kurinsky. Today we will have uh, I would like to speak to you on a very important issue how to memorize as you see as you read in the name of this uh, video how to memorize a million of uh, words from foreign languages or foreign words. There is no way how we can do it, <laughs> but we can really learn a lot of vocabulary and I will show to you how to do it. First of all, there is a rule in autodidactics. It just starts one, uh, on uh, one of the first pages. I show again this book. This book is very, very good for those who would like to be, let's say, more intellectual than uh, uh, let's say very intellectual people. So at the very beginning there is a rule of, of autodidactics that states that we should not learn anything right away, like, like in front, directly. So we can do it only indirectly. And I would like to show to you how we do it, just uh, given an example of this uh, situation that we have now. Look, all of us are uh, pushed by our governments to sit home uh, during this quarantine. This, if we take this as the main idea or as the main activity, then we can really do and learn a lot using this like uh, approach that we don't learn anything uh, directly. And uh, uh, some other situations we can learn indirectly when we uh, take a line, a very long line in a, in a store. When it gives us like a, our main activity will be to stand in the line, but because we don't, we cannot learn anything directly. It gives us an opportunity to do it indirectly, like the secondary, some kind of a secondary activity. This is very important to remember because as soon as we start memorizing or cramming our head with uh, words or whatever, we can really damage our, let's say, ourselves, no, no, our thinking, in, in other words. So the uh, technique, mnemo technique, uh, that I will share with you was developed by Kurinsky long, long time ago. And I, I developed a sort of a, like a story, I have a story which would help me to explain how he did it, how he came to this uh, Mnemo technique. Mnemo technique of uh, according to Kurinsky is not just association of words. You will see a little bit more in the end of this video what it includes and this video will be longer than all the rest because I need to show how these things work together in one video. So, a long time, a long, uh, okay, we should start <laughs> with a different, with a different uh, uh, part. Uh, as, as you already passed uh, this uh, stage, so you know already uh, focusing in all those uh, five langu languages, excuse me, that I showed to you. You know the position of the tongue in every in every of those uh, five or six languages and decoys uh, for our tongue. You all know that, and I assume that you already worked on movements and you know in every of those languages how to make those movements properly in order to achieve good sounds, correct sounds. So this stage is over. In this video, we will work already on this stage word movement. When we, uh, and how we do it, <laughs> I will show you using this, uh, this for example, approach. At some point, Kurinsky read, I, I assume, I believe that he read something about associations, about uh, coding techniques, about uh, uh, minimal techniques, and he decided to uh, read a lot of uh, let's say what what was available in those days, and uh, those days were there were no uh, no internet in those days. So and he found, uh, I think, enough of information just to develop his own system of coding. Why do we need coding? For example, we need to remember some kind of a date, a date of uh, of birth or a year of birth of uh, some rite or some poem, 
poet, uh, poet, some uh, artist, whoever, because the date gives us a chance like to travel in time and to think about like the habit the habitat and all the rest of the of the activities of the events that, that were during the time of life of that uh, that writer or that artist that musician or composer etc so for example we need and there there were a lot of such uh, events even historic events or yeah in events in history that we would like to remember and we would like to like always memorize them and to to, to travel in uh, let's say in our mind to those times so this technique would uh, like decoding the numbers or coding the numbers but vice versa would help us uh, to to do that and i will show to you how to do it i will not i will just give you this date yeah just one eight one four right it is uh, 18 14 and we need to decode it, it somehow so Kurinsky to turn uh, let's say numbers into images he decided to um, to code uh, numbers to turn numbers uh, into uh, letters and then uh, uh, to be able with those letters to build words and to build images which would allow to associate a certain image with that uh, clear date. I will also show who, uh, you how it works. So he decided to code uh, by uh, 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 number one uh, L, then uh, by two it will be P and or B because uh, they are very close to each other. Then three it would mean T or D because the T uh, D is also very close uh, to pronunciation. It's uh, very similar. Four by four. We mean here sounds like sh, ch, z, ch, something like this, and those uh, those kind of sounds. Then uh, by five we we uh, we code uh, v, f also, and uh, ph, which is which we read also like uh, f. By six we have n. By seven m, eight k. I will show you to you. I will show to you how to do it. Uh, just the whole thing by a k and uh, nine or k and g by nine we have r and by zero we have z or s t s and what does it give to us i will show you uh, already with this example just imagine that we um we need we want to remember the this uh, this year eight eighteen fourteen and because uh, at that year one very important uh, poet and artist was was born i will tell you later his name so we need just uh, if you look at this uh, this uh, table this approach uh, we will uh, we we see that here it will be l right eight it means k one means again l and four for us it's shu or chu or something like that so then we write down here like in big letters l k l s h c h chu or uh, yeah or yeah or other z and then we are uh, from these letters we want to create some kind of an image some kind of uh, connect them somehow so for us to, to do that to achieve that we need to uh, use uh, vowels we need to put vowels be between these uh, these uh, consonants, and in a in a quite a free way. So just thinking about this date, it came to my, uh, to my mind that I could say likely share. So because because the the name of this uh, let's say poet, famous Ukrainian poet is Shevchenko. Sometimes we we call him Sha. You know that in uh, some of uh, uh, South America, they have Che Guevara, we have She, and because Che Guevara is often is uh, called Che, but we have She. This is our Ukrainian poet, which 
uh, which is very inf influential, which is very important for us. He was like a founder of our nation. Despite all the efforts of Russia to destroy us, to kill us and uh, to turn us into Russians, people always found his works and he, they found uh, poems of Shevchenko like uh, they were like a foundation for the nation to uh, re re reborn again. So this is a very important date to remember. He was also an artist. So with this likely share, we can imagine that he was, and he, in fact, he painted several uh, auto portraits. Just we can imagine that he is painting himself and looks into uh, into that uh, auto, uh, auto portrait and says, likely share, and comparing with the mirror, mirror and his painting, likely share. He was a very good artist. So just try to. With a certain uh, probably uh, kind of humor, he would say, like Lichet, like Lichet. <laughs> so just remember, uh, after this, it will be very uh, difficult to forget, I believe, uh, this date for any of you. So when, uh, when Kurinsky saw that uh, how these associations work, like I showed to you, to you he uh, probably decided, okay, if it, is, if it stays in the mind, such associations so easy and for long, why not to apply it to learning languages? So here's what he developed. Okay, I'm trying <laughs> to, using this, he came to the, by the way, he came to the sentence, which will allow us easy to, uh, to code any number into images, into, yeah, yeah, images, I would say, or gestalts in German. So he, uh, he has a sentence, la, pi, t, Schwino macros, Schwino macros, la, pi, t, sh, vi, no, mac, mac, ro, us. So the, with this language, uh, we need to just uh, learn this um, sentence. Uh, it's very important for us to be able to, to use it and you will see how we will do it uh, with something <laughs> <laughs> further. So, he decided to develop uh, some kind of a word list, uh, Kurinsky, and then on the base of those uh, word lists, just to try to, to build these associations and to, to apply uh, the technique of, uh, of uh, how of uh, associating different images. And I will show to you how. The, the, uh, the actual, uh, let's say, uh, word, word list looks like this. Here we will write foreign words, words from the foreign language. Here we write the words uh, from our native language, or in this case, uh, English language. So, uh, but before we do that, before we start associating, we need to fill, probably Kurinsky uh, tried to use, uh, to remember or remember, let's say, not to remember, not to memorize, but to learn. It's better to use this term. He would, he would probably tried to, uh, to learn 20 words, then 50, then, and then he came to one, 100, which is quite possible to learn, not to memorize, we remember that, but to learn these words in, let's say, in a day. And I will show you to you how to do it. So, but we need to, first of all, we need to, to develop uh, like metrics using this coding system, yeah? Using this coding system, we will try to uh, develop the metrics, metrics uh, word list uh, for uh, for the whole uh, 100 words, which will which we will use all our life as long as we uh, learn whatever we want to learn. It's not only foreign languages; it can be anything where we have lots of terminology which we need to uh, to learn. So, I will show to you how we, uh, we continue developing this uh, matrix. And in this case, we need to, uh, maybe I need to show you also these a little bit like this. Keep like this. So, we need to use um, uh, these already uh, letters or so coding for uh, letters for, to code the numbers. So, we, we have uh, one la pi. T three uh, it's T four 
it will be shoe and uh, these are uh, usually these are just banal uh, let's say uh, associations or the associations of the first level then uh, by five we have five v it will be view by n we uh, we have no by uh, seven we have here may by eight we have key by uh, nine we have r letter so it will be row and by 10 we will have one here and zero uh, zero so we will call it zero we have two uh, two uh, consonants here zero so let's uh, continue bu building this uh, matrix you will do it by yourself and in the book also you can you can find this uh, like as, as an example matrix wood lit uh, yeah matrix of uh, wood list or for wood list or for loaning so one one it will be ll so what uh, association comes to our mind first it will be probably lily then uh, for me at least then one two means l and p so what do we have which uh, which wood comes uh, to the mind or which image comes to the mind lip probably then we will have 13 it's one three it will take L, 3 on a, uh, we have T or D, we have here D. So what do we have here? It could be a, a lid, could be a lid, could be what else? Uh, yeah, light, could be, it depends what, com what comes first uh, to your mind. And you will write it here. Then, uh, one four, it will be L and sh or sh or j something like that so for this uh, l and ch or sh we will have let's say leash uh, or what else leash la lash it could be lash here 115 uh, it will be one and five it will be l and v so what what do we have l and v it will be pro f also it could be f it will be life then 16 it will be 1 and 6 and we'll take 1 l and 6 it will be n so it will be line probably line we take l uh, we, we take 17 7 by 17 it will be uh, l and m so it will be lamb probably the first uh, image which comes into our mind then we take 18 18 it will be 1 and 8 so for uh, for 1 we have l for 8 we have k so it will be like probably yeah like then 1 uh, 19 it will be l 1 l for and for 9 we have r it will be uh, what what can be? it could be lore for example it can be what, what else yeah it could be lore probably lore then for 20 uh, 20 it already it will be p or b and s so it will be probably a pose something like, uh, like that so you will have to continue without me now until you fill this and develop your own matrix using that coding system using uh, those examples and uh, i need to show you one more time from the book that uh, coding system right for you just to uh, make it um, like a, a screenshot and then you can uh, use it uh, to, de to develop metrics when you finished here when you have the metrics and those are the words uh, it's important to have mostly nouns because it's it will be easier to associate and um, it's important to have like the first nouns that come to our mind to our imagination it's very important so just imagine that you finish that okay and then uh, it's time to learn some language some foreign languages and uh, i assume that you are brave enough to start and i will show you yeah probably you are brave enough to uh, to learn many of those foreign languages that i mentioned maybe all those five or six yeah it will be ukrainian uh french german italian spanish five languages
So, but I will show you the example with, uh, let's say, Ukrainian, because it's more difficult. Language uh, comparing to the rest of them. And uh, look, we have one Slavic language. Uh, it's Ukrainian and one Germ Germanic language that is German and three languages. Uh, those are Romanic languages, French, Spanish and uh, Italian. I will give you the example of Ukrainian, though I could could use any. So what what do we need to do? We need to learn <laughs> many, many, uh, many words in these uh, languages that I uh, already mentioned to you. But look what, what we do. We prepare this word list, like the first li word list at home. I just take only 10 words, but you fail completely uh, with 100. So you write, let's say, uh, from the textbooks, you write 100 Ukrainian word, and for every word you write, uh, you write a translation to English. For example, for this uh, one uh, word one, we have sadok, and then we have garden, we go on and go on until we made this would lead list completely. So we do that it usually in the evening and uh, you can switch on some very good program, some, something, something nice and uh, fill this, make this wood list. Next thing we do uh, in the morning, we, uh, when we wake up and it's better to wake up earlier than everybody else because then we need to associate uh, and we will have to do it uh, like uh, we need a lot of attention. No, let's not say attention, but uh, we will work with our mind or in our mind, in our imagination. So it's better if we do it before uh, the family gets, uh, gets in, gets up, in other words. So we made this list and in the moon, the first thing we do, we don't look at Ukrainian words here. And I assume that you are brave enough to start with Ukrainian languages, uh, language also. So we just, we look at our English words. We take the first word garden, yes, and we need to associate it with the first image that we have in our, let's say, matrix. In this case, we gave you an example, Kurinsky gave you an example, la. What is la? It's, uh, it's a sound, it's a note in, uh, you know, in music. But we need to, we need a little bit more than that. I would use um, a tuning, there is a tuning, uh, some kind of a, a tuner, uh, or tuning fork, yeah, tuning fork. I would use it, a tuning fork as an image of uh, la, for la, to, to, to make it more material. We need to, to, do, to do it, materialize, the, uh, even abstract things. So, look, I have gotten, and I have by number one, I have uh, this uh, la, this uh, fork, tuning fork. And I need to associate them somehow. So we have tuning fork and a garden. The first thing, uh, the banal, uh, we need to look at the banal uh, association that comes uh, to, uh, to our mind. For example, there is uh, somebody lost uh, a tuning fork in the garden. Okay, okay, this is, this is no, no emotion, okay. Somebody lost it, so fine. We need to get rid of this uh, banal or first association. We need to look uh, for something paradoxical or create something paradoxical in our mind. Let me, let us imagine, for example, that in the garden, not only trees grow, but also tuning forks grow. And the whole garden sounds like la, la. So this, <laughs> you see, you see how, how good it is. So as soon as we have this uh, paradoxical, uh, something unusual, something paradoxical combination or association, then we can move to the next, uh, to the next word we need to associate. The condition is here, it's very important, we shouldn't do anything negative. We shouldn't destroy uh, the garden, we shouldn't destroy the, uh, the, uh, the tuning fork. It should be positive, it should be interesting, and, uh, the, but at the same time paradoxical. So, we, take the, we look at the second word, cherry color. Cherry color. So, uh, for, for this it's a, an adjective, but we, we need to rem, uh, just uh, to imagine uh, uh, a cherry, 
just a cherry. And here we have the second, uh, by, by uh, number two, we have pi. And also we, we learned this matrix and uh, uh, we remember just, I wrote here like a part of the matrix, but you, you need to know, we need to know all these, the words that are behind these, uh, these numbers. So we know that uh, by number two, there is, a, uh, there is pi, right? And we need to associate cherry color, or uh, in this case, cherry, I suggest uh, to use instead of adjective, to use just a cherry, and uh, pi. So the first association that comes to our mind is uh, pi, uh, pi with cherries, right? Uh, it's very banal. It's, it's a banal association. This is the association of the first, the first level that first comes to our mind. We need, but and now we need to associate and the paradoxical and to do something different. What different can we do with pi? And we have to remember there is one more condition. There should be only two images, two. Let's say, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, two images, two two subjects, two two things, and they also they should not uh, uh, turn one into another. They not uh, they should not merge, but there should be some kind of activity between them. So pie and cherry. What else can uh, come to our mind? Um, for example, or oh, it the second. Uh, uh, we have, uh, let's say, in on cherry trees, we have pies growing. Yeah, this is um, just imagine the, the the picture on cherry trees, and uh, we have pies growing. Mm, it's already better than the first association. Maybe we need to do to search for something else. You know that in Japan they go to uh, to see and to watch how cherry trees uh, blossom. Yeah, sakura blossoming. All Japan, all lots of people, people, millions of people go just to see how it, it, it is happening. Let's do the same. But in this case, our pie will go to see uh, sakura, <laughs> Sak <laughs> sakura blossoming. So oh, this image is already better. And uh, these things can be all things. We, we, we can use them like a, a, in cartoons. Uh, they could be all alive. So a pie or several pies is better one goes to uh, to, uh, to smell let's say sakura so the next one we go we see that on this english uh, list of words we have house or hut let's say house just imagine some kind of a house and here we have a t by number three we have t okay so we need to associate t and uh, a house well, it's very easy because there is a t house so that's the first level association but we need to do something more um, it could smell like tea some uh, house that we imagine could smell like tea oh, this is already better what uh, uh, okay what if we just cover the roof you know that uh, in old times they covered uh, uh, houses with straw but let's cover our house with, <laughs> with tea very good tea, tea leaves, or maybe very, very shortly. It's, it requires a special master, but just imagine that house. And it can smell like tea for, for the whole district. Uh, it's better yeah, than just a tea house. So if, as soon as we have a feeling uh, like uh, it's funny or it's interesting, uh, so then our paradoxical uh, association is ready and we can move to the next one. Uh, wood, uh, by number four, we have a wood uh, may beetle. You know, may beetles, how they look like. So, and by number four, we have shoe. So what is the first association? We, somebody goes in the, and by shoes, uh, just uh, push out uh, beetles, right? That are on the, on the road. That's the first banal association. We need to do to have something paradoxical. What if we put, yeah? What, what if we put um, shoes on beetles and we see how a beetle, a big beetle, is flying and has shoes, very good shoes, <laughs> leather shoes, <laughs> a dream shoes for <laughs> for us. You see, it's it's funny. So this it works. That that it means it works. Then. By number five, we have buzz. It's a verb. It's a verb, and but we need to turn a verb into some some kind of a, 
uh, an, an noun what would give us as a buzz you know that uh, trumpet players use this uh, mouthpiece and uh, they call it the buzz so just imagine imagine that uh, that uh, 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 that mouthpiece and we need to connect it with five uh, its view what is a view let's imagine a window yeah so what is the first association that we have with these uh, two images, two uh, nouns, or two words? Just a, a, a mouthpiece is standing on the on the window. Hmm. Okay, this is a banal association. We need to get rid of it. We need something um, yeah, better. What if we see in the window a famous trumpet player? Uh, who is making these exercises? Miles Davis, for example. In our window, we see the Miles Davis, but instead of playing uh, his <laughs> his tunes, he's uh, just <coughs> practicing this. So this is already interesting, more interesting at least. You can work on some others. If you see that you're not happy, you can continue uh, using uh, associations. So using different associations. So uh, you can turn. Uh, the size we can practice with different size of uh, these uh, let's say images by number uh, six we have plow it's uh, plow and uh, here by, on the matrix we have no what can we do with uh, plow and with a plow and no what can uh, the first association is that uh, no is plowing so this is banal association of the first level we need something more second association would be let's say he doesn't have no doesn't have no doesn't have that raft that he used but with all his animals that he took with him to escape the floods he he has a plow, a plow and he is plowing in the sea <laughs> and all the animals are there and they give sounds and all this goes so this is already like something more funnier and better then by number seven we have go or walk so what uh, what uh, what uh, this is a verb so we need to imagine some uh, some kind of a subject we need we need to subjectivize this uh, a, a verb so go or walk let's say uh, uh, jo uh, those people who are jogging uh, let's say uh, one one person a jogger that we know very often we see very often on the road so and uh, by uh, by seven we have also May. So by May by image image of the May, of May as a month is just flowers tulips for example. So what is the first association with um, this jogger and uh, tulips? Uh, a jogger is coming to uh, to the place where tulips grow and smelling them. Well, that's a banal association. We need to some uh, we need to have something paradoxical. In this case, I suggest to have this like a tulip, a big tulip is also jogging <laughs> together with this this jogger. So this is already I like it. So we move to the next one. Uh, next one will be by uh, number eight. I have sing here. So sing, and here by in the matrix I have a key, a key for playing billiard. So a sing is a verb. We need to subjectivize it or objectivize it. And uh, with this word, I would say um, um, Pavarotti, Luciano Pavarotti, Italian, famous, very good Italian singer. So, and, and also key for billiard. What can uh, Luciano Pavarotti do with a key? A banal association that he would play billiard. Okay. He can play a billet. Maybe he did. I don't know. But we need something paradoxical. So what if uh, what if Luciano Pavarotti gives a concert to keys, billet keys that come <laughs> to <laughs> to the concert? So this, <laughs> when we laugh, it's already a sign that there is a feeling, and there is uh, the association has worked, a paradoxical association. Then number nine, we have a girl. Uh, by girl, we need to imagine someone. Let's let's take uh, Juliet from uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. 
maybe you remember the the movie by Zeffirelli and so it she can play a role of a girl in uh, in this uh, in this on this word list for us to objectivize just uh, this word and by number nine we have row row of seats so what uh, banal association the first association is uh, just Juliet is sitting on uh, on a chair in the row that's it so but we need to uh, make something paradoxical what, what is what's that what if all the chairs <laughs> just follow Juliet and uh, just express their uh, some kind of a feeling to to Juliet that they like her uh, this is a little bit better okay maybe something else what if Juliet is not sitting but jumping? She can jump. She has so much energy, show so much love to uh, Romeo that she can jump over <laughs> many rows <laughs> of, of chairs. <laughs> so I started to laugh. This is a sign for us that this association has worked. Paradoxical association. And uh, then by number 10, we have to have dinner. Let's imagine some, some kind of a dinner. It can be a last dinner, but it will be very complicated. But let's just say, uh, say some, some food, some dish, a plate. And here we have zero. By number 10, we have zero. So how can we associate uh, by zero? Zero, it can be something digital. It can be a digital, uh, let's say, uh, it can be a computer or a computer and dinner. Because the computer is working with zeros and ones, as you know. So by zero, we can mean something uh, to objectivize. We can mean a computer. So a computer and dinner. So on the table, there is a dinner and also there is a computer. So this is a banal, uh, banal uh, let's say, association. What else can we do? What if a uh, computer is, is having dinner? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like this. I will not continue. <laughs> with this, I will stop. But you continue doing this until 100. So this is the way you finish to work on all these associations in, in English. Then you put it aside. Uh, the first time it can, it it can take two hours, uh, approximately two more or less hours for us to go through the whole list of uh, 100 associations but later on you will really enjoy it and you will do quickly so for the next 15 minutes uh, 45 minutes we don't come to this uh, to this list we do something else we can look at other languages we can read something we can have a cup of coffee take a shower make uh, morning exercise whatever but within one hour after we finished we need to go through and in this time we don't even we can have it hold it just for us again but we uh, there is no need to because using these numbers and we know that the matrix is there and we know which uh, which images or gestalts are behind those numbers we can just go through them and try to uh, see if our associations work well if we really built them if we really created them let's let's uh, let's check ourselves so by number one we have la we have that turnkey so on a turnkey where it sounds in the garden huh because it's a lot of ton, uh, tuning key uh, uh, tuning forks are in in the garden uh, by number two we know that we have 100 words you see we have 100 numbers but by number two we have a, a pie. What is a pie doing? It goes to smell sakura trees. So it means that by number, by number two, we have um, cherry color. It's an adjective, but we know that it is number two. Three, three, we have here, by, uh, by three, we have tea. So we have a house, definitely house uh, covered with uh, tea tiles, maybe even. So by four, we have here shoe, what is in shoe? What we associated a uh, beetles, a beetle, a may beetle. By five, we have, uh, we know that in our matrix by five, we have you, so it's a window. What do we see in the window? Michael Davis <coughs> doing this uh, buzz exercises. Then uh, Noah, six Noah, 
Uh, six, Noel doing what? Noel is plowing. He's plowing the, together with uh, all the animals that he has. So it's a plow. Then number seven, we know about the seven we have May, May. It's uh, tulips. What tulips are doing? They are running together with a jogger that we know. It's easy. Then eight, key. By, uh, by eight we have key. So what is a key? It's a key to play billiard, to play pool. Who is there? It's a key came to watch the concert of, uh, uh, of the famous Italian uh, singer. Uh, so we know that it's sing, right? Pavarotti, Luciano Pavarotti, sing. Then we, we uh, by number eight, uh, nine, we know that it's a row of seats of chairs. Who is there? It's Juliet jumping <laughs> because of love to Romeo. She's jumping there. So we know that uh, it worked well. Then by 10, we have zero. It's, uh, we know that by number 10, we have zero, coded zero. And uh, by zero, what uh, that is computers, a computer has, is having a dinner. <laughs> so, and, uh, so we, we walk through again now, but uh, as you see, there is no need even to have it in front of us, this word list. We go until the end and check if something is not very good, it doesn't associate it, we have not associated so easy as you see that I went easily through that. So if something doesn't associate easy, it means that we need to, uh, to do something more paradoxical. We need to build a better association. Correct, in other words, ourselves. So we do it. It can happen, especially at the beginning. It's fine. It always happens, by the way. Then, then we can start with Ukrainian words. We forget about these words or foreign words that we uh, wrote here. We don't need these anymore because we know them. We now we start working with uh, foreign words. In this case, it will be Ukrainian, but in the case in uh, you uh, you can uh, since you are decide you have decided to work with other languages, it can be any any other language you take. So look what we do. We uh, in this case we need to use something that you've seen before. Yeah? And we need to use um, our internal landscape in our previous programs. Uh, in my previous programs, you can uh, find out information about that, about landscape. Look what I do. I have this list of Ukrainian words with me. Okay. I take the first one. So I know that in Ukrainian language, the, the focusing will be on the lower, lower teeth here somewhere. And I use um, uh, the decoy just a phrase quite known in Ukraine, Slava Ukraini. And I know that the, the, uh, the position of the town in Ukrainian is like this. So I need to turn the English position of the town, which is like this. I need to like, like um, make it in this form yeah, and say Slava Ukraini, sending all the efforts or let's say uh, all the vectors or muscle movements will go to the lower teeth. So this is the way I tune myself to correct pronunciation and sounding in uh, in Ukrainian. And then I look at the first word, sadok. So I need to use letter S. I know that um, uh, for S, the tongue will go a little bit to the teeth. It will be sa. Then uh, the same over there, it, the, the tongue will touch this position, do. And then for K, I read for K, my, uh, my position of the tongue, the tongue should, the back should touch here, it will be K, Sadok. So I said this word correctly, Sadok, Sadok. And I, 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 in my, in my uh, let's say, landscape, I imagine this, approximately this uh, speech apparatus. I needed to imagine how movements are made. After this, I, uh, I don't need, I look at number one, right? After I pronounced the first time, I look at number one. What is by number one? We have here L A. You remember L La. This is a tuning fork by number one. So what do I do with number one? La la la. It's in the in uh, in the garden. So you see, without even using the translation, I don't need it anymore. 
I just, because of this number, I know the association with the garden uh, through the, uh, the, uh, that uh, tuning fork. And I know this is sadok, it's a garden. So that's it. I don't need to think about the meaning of this word anymore, but in my internal landscape, I need to repeat this word and uh, to like to make like an echo, like sadok, 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 sadok. I can uh, I can make an echo like uh, ten times, twenty times. It depends on on how you feel. And also, there is no need even to say an anything aloud. So, it, in other words, this exercise can be practiced anywhere. We will not interfere. It can be at the job, at uh, train, plane, on the sea, in anywhere, in a prison, wh wherever you are. So, and in this way, you, you, you did it 10, 20 times, and you go to the next word. And you do the same with speech apparatus. You analyze, you connect, uh, let's say next word, I will take next word. For example, Vishnevi. Okay. For V, I know that my, my uh, lips get together. V, V open. Sh, sh, uh, sh will be somewhere here. Okay. Sh, sh. N, I know that the back of the tongue will touch this. N, and the, the air goes like this with sh, N. And again, v for v, our lips uh, get together. V and y, the 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 middle of the tongue will be a little bit uh, here. Will approach the middle of uh, this uh, the, the mouth. Vishnevi, and uh, so I I made it, and I, then I say Vishnevi. Okay, I said it. Then I look at number two here. You see Vishnevi, yeah, Vishnevi. What is uh, by number two? By uh, through, I know that it will be here, it will be a pi, right? Do you look, we have by number two, we have pi yeah, in the matrix. We have a pi. What is, uh, what we do with the pi? Uh -huh, our pi goes uh, to smell sakura, smell sakura uh, uh, trees. So I know already that this word means Vishnavi, it means cherry. This word means cherry. That's it. I don't. I don't force myself to remember this, uh, the meaning of the word, but now I say in my uh, uh, internal landscape, Vishnevi, and I know it's an adjective, Vishnevi, 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 and I can say it again 10, 20 times. So you do it with all the words that are here on the list. You don't need the second part, but sometimes maybe you need to consult with English translation. And uh, you can do it the first time, maybe it will take two hours, but with practice, you will come to one hour uh, for the whole uh, word list, or maybe even less. So we repeat, uh, we repeat this, uh, this word list, let's say minimum three, uh, three times a day. Can be, for some people, it can be five, maybe seven times a day. You will see how it works. The, the point for us to remember that as soon as we read a word and we already know without association and without going back to number, we know that sadok, aha, uh -huh, that's garden. Then we know Vishnavi, ah, it's uh, we, without even association or without looking at these numbers, we already know what it means. It's a sign for us that we've learned these words. So we don't, you see, we don't memorize, we learn. And this is the way it works. So every day for every language, we will make one, uh, one word list like this. So today it's for, for let's say, in the, uh, yesterday, last night, you made it for Ukrainian. Tonight you make it for French, then for German, then for Italian, for Spanish, and then again Ukrainian, but in the same sequence. Ukrainian, ta da da. So, why you take uh, Ukrainian, French, German, Spanish, Italian, and then again Ukrainian, ta da da. We need to make uh, 30 of uh, such word lists for every language. Just, and uh, that's, uh, yeah, let's, let's say. We need to, have, uh, to make 30 of them. First of all, we take words from our books, from textbooks that we are working with. And then uh, in internet, that would, you could uh, easily find like, 
3,000 the most used words in, uh, let's say, Ukrainian or French or German or, Sp or Spanish. If you don't find such, uh, such a resource in the internet, uh, I think you, you can find it. But if not, just take small dictionaries. There are uh, the most frequently used words in a certain language. There are such dictionaries. And that's why you, but without like uh, trying to find a sequence, uh, try uh, not to, to use a linear method of, um, of uh, uh, writing words. Let's say only A for A, only today I write w words only for A, then for B, tomorrow, and etc. etc. No, take, take some words from there, take some words from, uh, from uh, other article for, uh, that start with a different letter. So this is the way to work. Also, when you, when you, pass, uh, when you go through uh, this word list, the first time, then we need to to break it. We need to uh, <laughs> what do I mean to break it? Go to the programs where I speak about how to actualize interest. So we need to divide it the whole list into let's say four four parts. And uh, this is the way we break it: four parts. One, let's say two, three, and uh, four. And the next time we work on it, we start already with uh, not we not go like one, two, three, four, but we start one four, two, three. Then we could start four, three, two, one. So in other words, we don't need to work in a li linear fashion. Um, so let me see if I, uh, if it's everything that I wanted to say, not in linear. Yes, uh, uh, better to, um, to, um, to work with uh, this uh, word list more times than longer. Uh, more times, like like four or five times, maybe seven times, then one time, but very many, many times repeating one word. So no, <laughs> it's better to repeat it 10, 15, 20 times with, uh, with equal, which is goes down, which is almost like don't hear the first sounds. And, uh, but more often it's better. So, okay, with this, I think I, <laughs> Um, with this, I would like to say bye-bye. This is a unique way to learn uh, foreign languages, to learn a lot of vocabulary. With this instrument, you will, you are armed, in fact. But there are many other things in, uh, in autodidactics that we need to consider and uh, that can help us to, to do better. If you like this program, put like and uh, help your relatives. Special senior, and uh, bye bye.